Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India or 11 lectures we have discussed about the fundamentals of compressible flow which is quite important for analyzing the various aspects in propulsive devices right when i say propulsive devices it will be either the gas turbine engine or the rocket engine right or any other even the internal combustion engines and other thing and there we need to analyze these components for that we need to invoke the what you call compressible flow and if you recall we started with the definition of the compressible flow how it is different from the incompressible flow then we moved into the governing equations like conservation of mass momentum energy and then equation of state and then we looked at how to handle the what we call quasi one dimensional flow and then we derive relationship between the area ratio and Mach number which can be useful for designing nozzle, diffuser and other components as well. Then we moved into uh, the normal and oblique shock and we derived the expressions for various pressure ratio across the shocks and then we see learn that how to uh, use those expression for analyzing the flow with shock. And then we uh, moved into another one dimensional treatments with heat additions right which will be mimicking the combustion process and how does the properties will be changing with the heat additions. And then we moved into a again one dimensional flow with the friction effect without really invoking the concept of boundary layer. And although these analysis are meant for one dimensional, but you know similar feature can be for multi dimensional cases, but we will be restricting to the one dimensional flow for design purposes of the which will be simple and easier to handle. And today we will be looking at the fundamentals of combustion because the combustion is plays a very important role that most of the power plant for the uh, propulsive devices right relied mostly on the fuel or the chemical fuels right for its energy. And as uh, I had discussed in the uh, what you call earlier classes in the introductory lectures that bearing few uh, you know devices mostly we use the combustion or the burning of fossil fuel and also the other fuels in rocket engines you know like for uh, powering the our aircraft or the rocket engines. Right. So, therefore, one can say that combustor is the heart of propulsive device. So, it is very important to understand the fundamentals of combustion. So, uh, if you look at uh, we will first discuss I mean uh, you know rudimentary of the combustion and if you know uh, you might be aware the combustion is as old as civilization right. And uh, we know historically that people believe that the men were living earlier in jungles like other animals and they started you know discovering the fire right and therefore the fire is one of the greatest discovery of the man right and then they use it control it and then uh, therefore they could manage to develop a lot of science and technology that we see. That means, 
subsequ man's subsequent mastery over the fire has made all the development in science and technology that we enjoy today. But however, we are enjoying too much and we are also spoiling the nature, the mother nature to that extent, you know, life survival is at stake at this moment. And that is of course, due to the greedy nature of human being, right. So, of course, our ancestors were knowing, aware of the very fact that fire is the genesis of life and they were professing a science and technology which were very benign to the nature's other activities. But today, we are at different realm of science and technology. So, it is very important to look at that aspect, not only for the propulsive devices, for others as well. And you will uh, find that our, um, you know, scriptures are filled with a lot of prayers for fire and also they were knowing how to use that for the sustenance of life, human life in the earth without really spoiling the nature which is very important. So, even today the knowledge of combustion is very relevant because of what? Because of the scarcity of fossil fuel and also the stringent emission regulations because we are emitting too much of pollutants, particularly from burning of fuels and also from other sources. As I told that the very life on this earth is in trouble at this moment. So, therefore, it is very important to understand the combustion aspects, you know, and more in detail, right. And if you want to really understand this combustion, we need to go to the fundamentals and talk about it and learn it. So, that means, I can conclude that combustion is an exotic subject, which will remain as an important area of knowledge as long as human civilization exists in the globe. Because if you look at the fossil fuel may not be there for maybe another 100 years. But however, we cannot rely on nuclear, you know, because of greediness of human being. And also, it is quite dangerous to handle nuclear, you know, power plants and other things. So, we need to go back to the nature to pray for or to ask for the fuel, which will be basically biomass and solar and other things. So, for that, combustion is also important, and we need to understand that. Question arises whether we can have some you know eco friendly propellant for rocket engines or the, this thing, so that we can do that. It is important to look at because we can have that, but you need to be innovative to do that. So, question arises what do we mean by combustion? Can anybody tell me? Because we use combustion in everyday life. As I told always saying that particularly Indians, whenever a, a child will birth, we will burn a, you know, lamp. When man will die, we will incinerate it, right. We will again use the combustion. From the birth till the end, combustion is a part and parcel of human life, at least in India at this moment, even earlier days, right. So, what do you mean by combustion? We may talk like that, but what do you mean? For a layman, it is like setting a fire to a fuel, right. Is it good enough to say that, look, combustion is nothing but setting a fire to a fuel? Certainly no. That means, what is happening? When I say fuel, there will be oxidizer, right. Question arises, what do you mean by fuel and what do you mean by oxidizer? And when fuel and oxidizer are reacting, then naturally there will be some kind of heat and light being produced, right course, light need not to be produced all the time, but heat is must be produced. Heat must be produced, otherwise, you know. And whenever the heat is being produced during this chemical reactions, then we call it as exothermic reactions. Is it all the reaction, whatever taking place in during a combustion will be exothermic? Certainly no, but overall effect 
will be the exothermic. So therefore, we can call it as a combustion as a self-sustained chemical process involving several reactions during which heat is liberated due to overall exothermic chemical reactions. Right? So, there are several examples of these combustion devices starting from the LPG burners what we use in our you know home for cooking food right and furnace candle flame internal combustion engines gas turbine engines rocket engines so on so forth there are several application as you go along i'll talk about but we'll be restricting our discussion in this course to the gas turbine engines and rocket engines only but however i will try to give a overall pictures about the scope or the magnanimity of the combustion so far application is concerned right now question arises what are the essential conditions for the combustion to take place when i talk about combustion that means there will be fuel there will be also oxidizer and when the fuel and oxidizer are there they must be mixed somehow right for example, if I take this room and it is having you know some air always there right, air means it will be containing oxygen. But if suppose I am having a gas let us say LPG gas you know it LPG gas we use for cooking for in a burner. If I just allow the LPG gas to be there in this room and mix then is it combustion will take place. Right? It won't. That means you need to what ignite it. But even if I am having giving igniting it, igniting means basically initiating it, right? Then is it possible it will ignite and make it self-sustained? Because as we have looked at that combustion is basically self-sustained chemical reactions, which will must be exothermic in nature overall wise, right? It cannot be self-sustained unless it is exothermic because where heat will come to be make it self-sustained, right? Now, what else? It must be in the right fuel air ratios, right? That means to summarize there must be fuel and oxidizer must be there, need not to be only the oxygen, right? Oxidizer can be any other things, right? And the fuel air ratio must be in the right proportion dictated by flammability limit. What do you mean by this flammability limit? As I go along I will be talking about, but we will not be getting into it and ignition energy. The question arises: what will be the amount of ignition energy and all those things we need to look at, right. And if I want to look at this combustion, what are the things it should have? it should have a fuel and oxidizer and you should have ignition energy right i always feel that this combustion is similar to of a human life right how it is you people can think of can anybody tell me how i can take a similitude from a life and say that combustion i will tell you for example a person has taken bath so, that means it is started life and then it will continue till death similarly if we are having a fuel it has to be burned till the fuel is exhausted out right yes or no right and if you don't have a surrounding can you sustain a food suppose you don't have a food how will you do and you need to have initiated or to the life and your father mothers are initiators right even society to help you to learn the thing so therefore one can think about combustion is nothing but a part and parcel of life and therefore our ancestors were always you know appreciating the fire the energy which is comes from everywhere so now we look at what are the constituents of combustion that means is basically 
what are the subjects you need to have to have a you know command over the combustion process, you know sub subject. That means, it is if you look at you need to learn about thermodynamics right and as we have already discussed for a uh, while discussing the this is the thermodynamics and you need to know the chemical kinetics because it is the you know involving chemistry. So, you need to know the chemical kinetics and not only that, but you need to look at the heat and mass transfer because without heat being transferred you cannot have a combustion. So, also the mass transfer that means mass has to move and mix together then only. So, you need to have a heat and mass transfer and also the fluid dynamics which we have already dis discussed extensively. So, therefore, combustion is basically a multidisciplinary subject. To get a command over the combustion, you need to learn other subject very well and you will have to devote a lot of time and perseverance then only you can be a master in combustion otherwise no. right? So, it is a multidisciplinary and engineering is basically a multidisciplinary as well. right? So, therefore, it is important to be look at combustion and it is a, as I told it is the power house you know of a, any uh, vehicle like aircraft or a what you call the rocket engine. That means, it is the heart combustor is the heart of the engine and engine is the heart of the vehicle. So, it is the heart of the heart of the vehicle you know you can say that. So, what are the applications if you look at there are several application I will just uh, you know jot down some of them. One is the power plant if you look at this picture epsilon mostly we use the pulverized coal and of course, nowadays the gas like uh, being used to generate power and there will be of course, the transport if you look at transport there is a locomotives you know like on the land and the sea or the in the air, these are rocket engines and then gas turbine engines, these are the applications broadly it can be classified and chemical industry. There are several chemical industries which you know rely on this combustion processes you know starting from your refinery to the uh, what you call the fertilizer, cement and any other you know chemical chemical producing devices, blast furnaces, you know metallurgy, there are several applications if you look at I club all those things as a chemical industries because all we requires chemicals. So, and of course, the domestic applications we know that keep in mind that all these devices are sources of air pollution and also the water pollutions. That means, we need to be carefully use the energy for our life without spoiling the nature which support us for our life. That is a very important part what our ancestors were talking about not going against the nature nor winning over the nature rather you know be a part of nature right. And that is the philosophy we need to adopt in the modern life to save our earth from the onslaught of this blatant use of science and technology in human life. So, <coughs> That does not mean that we should not use, we should use it sparingly, we should use in a sustainable manner such that we can develop a good earth for our next generation. So, now coming back to that as you look at this combustion like it is having a subject thermodynamic, fluid dynamic, heat and mass transfer and kinetic energy. I have just you know put this thing applications, if you look at there are several applications uh, if you remember that I had talked about earlier about Rankel engine which is I like it of course, it is not being used nowadays, but I feel it will be one day will be used maybe with the uh, what you call contribution from people like young people like you. And it is a very good for the because it is quite compact it can be used for the aircraft applications. And of course, the IC engine which is uh, what you call uh, being used from the time of Wright brothers 
till today it is being used uh, you know profusely for driving an aircraft particularly small aircrafts which we will not be discussing, but however it is a very important engine concept. And uh, like material synthesis and other things are being used and incinerator as I told that these our ancestors were knowing how to incinerate the dead bodies you know. It is a very nice way of doing it and we need to work for that to make it more benignly you know environmental benign. And boiler which is the basically we get power and I have shown a diagram over here and furnaces is being used there are several kinds of furnace blast furnace coke oven furnace there are several like glass melting furnaces there are several of them and which is used in industries and that uses combustion of course the gas turbine engine which is being used for our aircraft propulsion and also the power plants generating power rocket engine which we will be discussing both the gas turbine engine and rocket engines to propel an air uh, what you call a rocket the power generations and there is a very interesting thing recent time there is a micro combustors you know which is having a lot of applications in uh, what you call micro air vehicles kind of things right and um, and there is a new engine which is coming up is pulse detonation engine which can be used for aero application as well. So and of course as I told this is a fire which is a genesis of our life and if you look at fire everywhere is there and so therefore these are the all application one can think of because when I am talking about uh, what you call combustion applied to the gas turbine uh, and rocket engines but you need to have a broader view that is why I put these things before you and question arises now what do you mean by a fuel because we need to use fuel we must know what do you mean by a fuel can anybody tell me so, so fuel is the combination of hydrocarbons that release the heat on breaking that bonds between them yeah but if you look at there are several fuel which are not hydrocarbon right can you not call it as a fuel but i want to define what do you mean by a fuel it's a chemical when uh, yes when oxidizes releases energy but you know i can ask suppose there is a fuel but can it be act as an oxidizer any time not possible right for example like oxygen we know oxygen right in the air can it be act as a fuel no no, no? I say when it, when it is but it is actually it is that means we need to define a term which will tell us whether it is a fuel or not right so chemically a fuel is a substance which donates electron right that means what is happening during the chemical reactions there will be breaking a bond and forming a bond right and this breaking a bond how does really occurs because of like exchange of electrons right at the uh, level right then only it can be broken energy can be released because what you are doing whatever energy is there you are trying to release it and use it for your purposes of you know that is the chemical so <coughs> when i talk about this electrons it can be donated that means one electron can go from one molecule to the you know from the atom level to another right in a molecule or it can be accepted right there can be two things if donation you know you are one is moving other we can come also in it is like a go of the world you know it is like a, if it is a coin head is there tail will be there you know that way if light is there then darkness is there that way if you are giving something you can accept as well. So then when you talk about this how will quantify it how will talk in terms of can you say that okay one electron is moving the another electron can be accepted five can be moved and other thing. So for that we can define a term you know electronegativity that means a fuel must have a lower electronegativity you know this term electronegativity which was uh, given by Leon's Pauling right who was a Nobel laureate who you know talked about this electronegativity 
which is basically a property of elements ability to donate or accept a electron right in other words it is basically says that what is the extent of an electron in an atom you know sorry the electrons in the atom in a molecule can be attracted to itself or it can be repelled from it right that will be the electronegativity that means if you talk about this electronegativity right when you are giving then what will happen this will be decreasing so that therefore if you look at this potassium is having 0 0.8 right electronegative that means it can donate lot of electron right it is having higher capability to donate the electron like it is basically a donor you know. So, as you go along with this this label that means is 0 0.08 the sodium, lithium, magnesium, beryllium, boron you know this electronegativity increases and similarly the hydrogen you know and carbon it is also increasing right or if you look at oxygen over here and this O is oxygen and F is for fluorine right what it indicates that means oxygen is having higher electronegativity what is the meaning of it that means it will be accepting the electron right it won't be donating. So, if you look at what are the fuels in our case the reactive fuels will be which one the reactive fuel among all these things right. If I consider the oxygen as a oxidizer which is having a higher electronegativity. So, which will be more reactive or most reactive fuel among this table whatever I have shown huh? potassium. potassium you know and but however, it is quite reactive we do not use it in our data, but all metals even like you know these are metals can be used as a fuel right and we use carbon and hydrogen as one of you told that you know hydrocarbons we use as a fuel because it is available. And if you look at the if any of this can be fuel and this can be oxidizer as well right depending upon you know what it is electronegativity. So, if you look at we can say that in the similar way that chemically an oxidized substance which accepts electron right and uh, we will take an example where we can say that you know oxygen can be acted as a what as a fuel like for example F 2 O 3 right. If you look at fluorine as the largest capacity to accept electron right because it is having electronegativity of 4. So, it will be acting like an oxidizer whereas, the oxygen which is a common you know known as an oxidizer right it is is a fuel because it is having a lower electronegativity. So, therefore, when you talk about this one has to know what is the electronegativity then only one can talk about it. And let me tell you there is a fluorine although it is quite reactive in nature, but in free form it is not available in India in, in the earth crust although their percentage are more that is the good boon for us otherwise it could have been more problem right is not it because it is a very very higher oxygen. And if you look at that our air see how nature is being made air which contains a large amount of nitrogen which is a inert gas right. So, that is the beauty of the nature. So, uh, do not you think that it is quite interesting that you know oxidizer which is commonly believed to be an oxide can be acted as a fuel right. So, now let us classify these fuels and oxidizer based on the physical states we can classify like for example, gaseous fuel, liquid fuel and solid fuel based on physical states right. And of course, the gaseous fuel is quite easy to handle 
am i right or wrong is it easy to handle certainly no because if there can be a lot of leakage and to store a gaseous fuel is quite difficult and to carry from one place to another is quite difficult gaseous fuel but however it will be very easy to burn a gaseous fuel right as compared to the liquid and solid why it is so so gaseous fuel as i told that uh, they are preferred over the liquid and solid fuels right and because it is easier to burn with higher efficiency but do you agree with this point that you know it is easier to burn with a higher efficiency why not the liquid fuel and the solid fuel that question must be bothering you as you go along we may see sometime and it is easier to control the emission which is a greater concern at this moment than what it was maybe 100 years back right and gas handling system is less expensive do you agree with this statement right certainly no or yes some of you are saying true right na? why because if i want to atomize a liquid right i will have to supply a large amount of pressure if i want to use a solid like a bulk let's say wood or something i have to pulverize it and to transport the pulverized fuel is quite difficult you know and how i'll control it is also a difficult thing that means i need to feed certain amount of liquid and or the solid fuel whereas the controlling will be easier in case of gaseous fuel right so therefore that is the reason what i can give but if you are having difference of opinion we can discuss it commonly used gaseous fuels are basically cng lpg biogas producer gas coke oven gas acetylene methane hydrogen propane and so on so forth there are several kinds of gases you might be knowing this full form cng is compressed natural gas there is a people are talking about png at kanpur will be having that png that is pipe natural gas that means you will get gas in your home through a pipe conduits right and lpg you know the liquefied petroleum gas of course biogas you might be knowing it is being used in rural area from the cow dung and others animal dung kind of things or any other even uh, what to call leaves you can get by fermentation process and producer gas you might be aware that producer gas can be obtained by thermo chemical conversion from the biomass and other you know uh, bio materials right you uh, i think you might be aware you will be surprised to know that most of the automobiles were being run using producer gas before the second world war right producer gas and coke oven gas of course from the your coke oven furnace acetylene methane hydrogen and propane we do use and uh, let us look at types of gaseous fuel at oxidizer what we can think of liquefied petroleum gas we know that it is used in our uh, what to call uh, houses domestic purposes and also it can be used in industrial purposes air and oxidizer can anybody tell me what this liquid petroleum gas is it a one gas or it is a multi gas or is a you know two gases are there what are those things lpg gas lpg we use every day you know without that cooking food will be difficult you know at least in urban areas propane, huh? propane only certainly no right propane is fine but methane is not there it is a propane and butane and what is the percentage we will be looking at it compressed natural gas what are its constituents we'll look at it can be used in ic engine you know like uh, in kanpur city few years back we were using kerosene i'm uh, sorry we were using diesel and it was creating lot of suits nowadays we are using cng right compressed natural gas and as a result the suit level or the particulate level in the atmosphere has been reduced drastically 
right. Therefore, it is being used in IC engine, fun nets and several other, uh, other, other places like producer gas again the biomass can be used even coal can be you know from the coal one can get also the producer gas. People are talking about you know gasification process as the better way of abating the emission level right from the power plant. So, IC engines and then boilers and furnace they can like methane, propane, hydrogen you know uh, can be used in several applications whatever you know you can use it can be used and particularly the hydrogen is a very very good fuel but unfortunately it is not available in nature right we need to convert this fossil fuels or other forms of fuel to hydrogen that is a big challenge which uh, has to be because you know it is a good fuel and uh, having a higher calorie value as well so biogas which is being used in engine and burners we know this acetylene we use for gas welding cuttings and other things so uh, let us look at what are the constituents of you know five fuels i have shown here you can see that lpg which contains propane 70 percent and butane 30 percent you keep in mind this is in percentage okay all data is given in this table are in percentage that is you know i have given some typical number 70 30 right 70 is propane and 30 is butane but in several other places you may find 60 40 maybe 50 50 you know that that means this will be varying from different well to well or from place to place for example you know if we are having godavari basins where if you take this you know uh, lpg gas or the this thing then it will be uh, you know different than the if we take in the assam or some other place right so therefore it will be varying in a, you know in other countries also it varies the percentage there is nothing sacrosanct about this percentage but what we must learn that it is having propane and butane keep in mind that it is liquid at what pressure is it atmospheric pressure or what pressure it will be liquid actually in case of your cylinder it is a liquid when you open that that means at a higher pressure it is a liquid when you open it then it convert into gas and you get the gas that is the beauty of liquefied petroleum otherwise you will have to carry will be very difficult right okay so natural gas if i look at that in this uh, table it is something around 90 percent of methane 5 percent of ethane right and 5 percent of nitrogen you may get several other composition as i told it depends on the where it is being taken from which well it is being taken but generally it contains you know uh, methane in a large proportion. Similarly, the producer gas if you look at it contains basically the CO if you look at CO is a fuel am I right and it contains also hydrogen and rest of the things are not really part of fuel like 50 percent nitrogen and 0.1 of course oxygen and 8 percent CO2 but you again I must tell you that these constituents will be varying depending on the type of gasification units you are using and also the whether you are using oxygen or you are using air if you are using air nitrogen will be more and uh, of course the propane uh, generally it contains you know large amount of propane and small amounts of other hydrocarbons biogas it contains majority is methane and of course, a lot of therefore, the caloric value of biogas, propane and produce uh, sorry not propane, but the producer gas are quite low as compared to the natural gas or the LPG that we will see little later on. So, heating values if you look at amount of heat release per unit kg when it undergoes oxidation at normal pressure and temperature we call it as a heating value right which is very important question arises how will evaluate the heating value of the fuel how will evaluate what are the ways of doing that can anybody tell me i want to know let's say methane what will be the you know calorific value what we call heating value is nothing but also the calorific value of the fuel that means how i'll go about it? if i'll go for a liquid fuel let's say kerosene how will evaluate it if i'll go for a 
solid fuel, how I will evaluate? I need to know how to evaluate, find out what is the value. For example, you have come up with a, another exotic fuel, let us say for a propellant, for a rocket engine. So, you need to evaluate how much energy it will give. You change the heat energy into work from work we can the Is it really so? Why not directly? Why I will convert into heat, uh, heat into work? Then you know it comes to the efficiency, then how I will evaluate efficiency perfectly. It is a very simple way, you just burn it and then find out how much it can heat being generated per unit kg of fuel. There are two units are being used, one is known as bump calorimeter, you must be knowing, it is being taught to you, okay. that is mean for liquid and solid fuels. That means, you can measure the heating value or the calorie value of solid and liquid fuel using bump calorimeter. Whereas, for gaseous fuel, we cannot use it. We will have to use a junker calorimeters for measuring the calorie value of a gaseous fuel and uh, you can refer my book, it is given the schematic which I will not be showing here and understand how it can be done. So, when you talk about this heating value, there will be two heating values, one is higher heating values that value, uh, uh, heating value of fuel when water is condensed. That means, whenever combustion will taking place, particularly the hydrocarbon and hydrogen, water will be formed. If it is condensed, then you will get that heating value which is known as higher heating value. There will be low heating value where the amount of heat released by burning 1 kg of fuel, you know, is uh, and assuming the latent heat vapor and reaction product is not recovered. That means, we have is not condensed, it is a part of it. So, that is we call it as a lower heating value. So, lower heating value is basically higher heating values minus m that is the amount of water being formed per kg of fuel and the amount of fuel into delta H V, whereas delta H V is the heat of vaporization you know for water which is taken at generally 298.15 Kelvin and all with reference to the what do you call these values. And we will discuss little bit as we go along how we will evaluate and other things right about the calorific value of a fuel. So, if you look at the types of liquid fuels, uh, of course, we know this gasoline, it is nothing but your petrol right, what we use you know, we are all familiar with that petrol, petrol price also diesel price, there is a you know a diesel price is going up and this is the high speed diesel which are being used you know for uh, like some places like kind of things. Generally, the normal diesel is being used in automobiles, furnace oil is used in furnace, kerosene you know which is used for uh, domestic purposes also aircraft engines, gas turbine, ramjet engines you know of course, I will be talking about it kinds of you know kerosene and alcohol which can be used in ice engine. But beside this, there are several fuels which are used in you know scramjet engines, liquid propellant rocket engines, you know ramjet engines like those are hydrogen and UDMH unsymmetric dry methyl hydrogen and MMMH liquid hydrogen and triethyl amine these are the all kinds of fuel which we will be discussing as you go along and then liquid oxygen, red fuming, nitric acid, you know, di nitro tetroxide, nitrogen tetroxide and those things we will be discussing as you go along. So, so if you look at these properties of the liquid fuel is very important, so also the gaseous fuel, what I talked about the heating values, heating values for solid, liquid and fuel. But, prop, but liquid fuel will be having certain properties which must be looked at carefully. And uh, if you look at the specific gravity is one of property which uh, all of you know, it is basically ratio of mass density of fuel to mass density of water at the same temperature right. And there will be uh, you know uh, that means, A g if I say the specific gravity, it is the density of the fuel divided by density of water at the same temperature. Generally, the reference temperature is taken for the you know for both the fuel and water as 288.8 Kelvin right. And this specific gravity you know is a very important aspects because that will tell you 
about the volume contents and also the hum amount of you know uh, reactions in the combustions and other thing. So, uh, in order to uh, have a scale you know this American Petroleum Institute they have come up with a scale which is uh, empirical in nature that is the A P I S G is equal to 141.5 divided by S G minus 131.3. What it indicates that means S G is a smaller that means it is a lighter right. If it is small this is a lighter uh, liquid fuel and then this S G specific gravity that is American Petroleum Institute scale that will be higher right. If it will go down then this will go up kind of things and you can evaluate for various fuel kind of things. So, and as I told this specific gravity can be connected to the heating value of the fuel because the amount of molecules and then what are the you know weight of that which will be deciding. So, therefore, like uh, it can be related this you know uh, specific gravity that is American Petroleum Institute scale uh, you know specific gravity with the HEV. And for gasoline if you look at this high heating value is equal to the low heating value 93 A P I S G right minus 10 is a kilojoule. If you look at these are basically uh, what you call a empirical constant what it is for gasoline they have used and uh, similarly for the kerosene it is having similar numbers right. So, if you look at the density which will be changing because these are all petrochemicals like density I can have a change you know depending upon what I want I can really play around get these heating values as well right. So, there is another important uh, properties which we need to look at that is the auto ignition temperature the lowest temperature required to make the combustion self sustained without any external aid because if you want to make a you know combustion self sustained we should go a temperature beyond the auto ignition. So, that it can be otherwise we need to continuously giving the ignition energy right. So, this is a very important parameters uh, which need to be looked at and it can also be used for the safety reason to avoid this kind of a you know explosion kind of thing. So, there is a another very important point that is the flash point which is basically minimum temperature at which liquid fuel can produce sufficient vapor to form a flask or a flammable mixture with air right. That means, what will happen it will vaporize as a result there will be a flask and if you know like it will uh, and then it will again discontinue right. That means, it is a you know phenomena which will be remaining for certain time. So, it is very important from the storage point of view. In other words this is uh, you know this is the maximum temperature below which a liquid fuel can be stored without really uh, what you call without any fire hazard kind of things right. So, therefore, th this is very important aspect to qualify to say that look I will have to store this liquid fuel under set otherwise it will be a, you know in a, it can incur a fire which is hazardous in nature. So, the fire point which indicates the minimum temperature at which liquid fuel produces sufficient vapor to form a flammable mixture with air right that continuously support combustion establishing flame instead of just flashing that means it will ensure a continuous combustion right. That means, when I am talking about the uh, you know to sustain combustion I should go beyond the fire point right. And when I am talking about storage I need to have a you know temperature at which I can store a fuel must be less than the fire uh, flash point. So, that is a you know whenever you use hydrocarbon fuel lot of uh, suits will be formed because of you know a incomplete combustion other thing. <laughs> and uh, liquid fuel is uh, having uh, you know prone to the soot formation. Therefore, we need to find out soot point and which is a measure of tendency of liquid fuel to produce soot 
because the soot is not really good for the gas turbine or any other applications. So, therefore, it must be also talked about when you are judging whether this fuel can be used for your engines or not. So, these are the properties which are very important. I must uh, just tell you the specific gravity which I have shown uh, you know for this kerosene and ATF aviation turbine fuel JP 8 there are several kinds of thing you can look at the number and uh, the viscosity kinematic viscosity is shown here and boiling point if you look at it is having range and flash point if you look at this is the 311 and 325 which is nearby and auto ignition temperature if you look at it is you know uh, what you call uh, higher than the flash point and of course, the stoichiometric ratios is generally hydrocarbon fuel will be around 15 that and uh, the heating values if you look at all are similar numbers like 45.2 and 43.5, 43.5 mega joule per kg right. And there are uh, so types of solid and fuel oxidizer, there are several kind of thing biomass like wood and saw dust all those things lot of things are there. You need to use air oxidizer domestic purposes even the engine can be run, coal, coke, charcoal several kind of things. But the special fuels particularly for the uh, what you call rocket engines is the nitrocellulose, STPB, CTPB which we will be discussing little later on. And there is a several other oxidizer like nitroglycerin, which are solid in nature. Keep in mind ammonium perchlorate, ammonium nitrate, uh, you know, nitrogen tetroxide kind of thing, which is used in solid propellant rocket engine and hybrid rocket engine. I will just ask a question is there any possibility that we can have a solid propellant fuel, you know, or the fuel from the natural products, not like these chemicals? You please think about it, let us see as you go along I will give some clue about it. With this I will stop over. <laughs>